Did ancient Britons commit human sacrifice in Gloucestershire? The answer to this and a few other questions coming up. To a special edition of the Prehistory Guys show. So, what have we got, Rupert? What have we got today? What's special today that we can? What's special today is: Have you folks all seen? Uh, this was in the headlines quite a bit uh, a week or so ago, and uh, we we wanted to do a bit of research before we said anything about it because. Um, do you want to show people the headlines, Michael? Because uh, it was just well. Where, sh- where shall I? Where shall I start? Um, uh, Chieftain and seated companion illustrate complex prehistoric burial rituals. Um, where's a good one? Here we are. Uh, unearthed uh, ancient British chieftain and probable shaman. Probable shaman. Reveal secrets about. <laughs> Old burial rituals, whatever they may be. <laughs> I think this is the one that sort of, uh, sort of, uh, I saw first actually. Uh, a four thousand two hundred year old burial of Bronze Age chieftain discovered under UK skate park. Strangely yes. clickbaity that. It's very clickbaity. They're wickedly clickbaity, aren't they? Um, it, it. The thing is, and the, fa- the famous yeah, one. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> human sacrifice in Gloucestershire. Anybody? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the uh, the main reason that we wanted to be uh, thorough, you know, n- not record something immediately on the on the back of these uh, pretty exciting headlines that had come up was possible shaman buried with somebody. So what, how would they know? Uh, you know, mm, how would you make that? I wonder. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so we went back to source, and uh, and we contacted um, Andy Hood at Foundations Archaeology, who are uh, they're the organisation who actually did all the excavations, and and he, Andy was a great help, and uh, and put quite a lot of things straight. It's it's bizarre, really, how journalists. Will will go to any lengths to to extract a glamorous headline from something that, as Andy himself said, you know, this doesn't need any hyperbole. It's a fantastic excavation and discovery in the first place. Just doesn't need Absolutely. any of the attached nonsense. But and I hope that by the time we've uh, we've finished this, uh, people will get that you know, in it, in in and of itself, in its yes. own right. It's yeah. a it's a fantastic uh, excavation. Yeah. So, so, so if we ground, go back to uh, sort yeah. of uh, ground zero, if you like, let's uh, do that. Because the, all these uh, uh, all the articles said that this burial was found under a skate park. Well, it was the other way around. The excavations were being done in preparation for uh, the construction of a skate park when they were they were renovating the um, the. Uh, community hall or something, weren't they? Like? That's right, in uh, Lech- Lechlade on Thames. Say yeah. a little about Lechlade itself, uh, uh, Rupert. I mean, it's a you know smallish town, isn't it? In Gloucestershire. Um, I, yeah, I haven't been there for years. <laughs> well, do you know what? It's only about 12 miles from um, the Devil's Quoit in Oxfordshire. That, that makes sense, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's it's kind of um, west of there, east of Sirencester. Mm. Right now, everybody knows where it is. <laughs> <laughs> there are just there are so many fa- fascinating aspects to this, and and so you know we, we'll come back to what this excavation is all about uh, in a minute. But I think it's it's worth saying that this whole area is. Uh, the archaeology in this particular area is very, very rich. There's stuff yeah. going from uh, from late Neolithic right the way through. There are Saxon burials all within this comparatively small area. Uh, so you know clearly it's um, 
it, in fact, it doesn't even make sense to say it was in use for these thousands of years. The fact is, people still living on there now. You know, as people have never gone <laughs> yes. away. It just happens to be yeah. that our burial practice yeah, and, uh, in the oh. last, you know, uh, however many. Wow, years. Letchlade, I think, has a graveyard with dead people in it. <laughs> Who'd have thought? <laughs> <laughs> yes, but, I'm being facetious. Forgive me. But th but this burial itself is uh, is fantastic, isn't it? Because in terms of uh, this kind of burial in Britain, is almost unheard of, and with all the ingredients combined in this burial, so the number of grave goods of a particular type, mm -hmm. we'll get into that in a minute, uh, it's actually the only one known in Britain. Uh, so, yeah, it is exciting. Doesn't need any of this cannibalism or, or human sacrifice or whatever they were. Uh, so so what we've actually got, what we've actually got is um, uh, archaeology being done on a known site because it was known from the crop marks that there was a ring ditch here, which which uh, kind of assumed there was a, 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 a barrow of some sorts. And there are several, you know, within a few hundred yards of, of each other. I think there are five others apart from this ring ditch, but the skate park was actually going to go on this this particular ring ditch, so... so regulations say you've got to do the archaeology yeah. so in the archaeology the ring ditch there they they uh, excavated an area of 30 meters by 10 which is quite a large service area for, for uh, an excavation of, of this sort um, but the actual uh, gravels are only about 20 centimeters below the uh, existing yeah. turf so it's not a very deep one yeah um, they had two late neolithic uh, um, sort of cremation pits uh, there with some pottery and some flint in, a bit of charcoal, no real established uh, bones. So two from the late Neolithic. The ones that we're going to be talking about are two from the early Bronze Age, yeah. where you have got inhumations, but also, uh, also within the ditch, um, zooming forward to the Iron Age, we've got three within the area of the excavation, three um, uh, burials from the Iron Age, two yeah. blokes and and one woman, yeah. and uh, also a couple of um, cr pits in and around the the, the ditch, uh, mm. which I think date to a similar time. There about that, in a very short nutshell, is what we've got uh, on the ground yeah. or under the ground, I should say, in this uh, in this excavation. But the two we're going to concentrate are the two within the ring ditch. Uh, the the absolute central burial for whom we assume the mound that used to exist was made uh, and an accompanying burial from the same period. Yes. So we'll, we'll, let's kick off with the central burial, which has to be, uh, you know, it's fair to say that it is most likely that this central burial was the most important. It's the primary burial in the site. It's why the mound was created. And it's a crouched figure with a lot of high status grave goods. The one that just was so captivating for me, a copper dagger with a whalebone pommel. A whalebone oh. pommel. God, we were, I mean, what, you, yes, you, 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 immediately you can go off on one. Yeah. So a copper dagger, um, f uh, a flint um, and striking stone. Uh, a striker light set. Yes, wow. so a fire making kit, for want of a a, a better uh, term, a stone bracer. So yeah, and not just any sto old stone bracer. Uh, uh, for those that don't know what a bracer is, uh, it's a, an archery thing. Goes it goes on oh, if you're left handed on the, on the wrist, right handed. You shape yourself. Goes, yeah. <laughs> it, uh, yes. Uh, yeah, it's a simple thing. It's just anything. Could be leather. Could be, but uh, very often. Uh, in the Bronze Age and Neolithic, it would, be, it would be made of stone and attached with a couple of leather thongs to your forearm to stop the bowstring uh, slapping your wrist and taking the skin off, which it yeah. would do. I promise <laughs> you. Been there, done that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I say not just any old bracer because I, uh, it looks like Langdale stone to me. It does look like Langdale stone. It's a green stone, you know. And yeah. uh, 
that uh, you know i mean langdale stone is it's prized wherever it's found it's so you know it's a thing you know this um uh, this burial is significant and 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 then what makes this burial unique in britain is that uh, interestingly not on the body but in the infill so so they've they've buried this guy they've yeah. started filling in the burial pit and then about 40 centimeters of soil later so on top of him they've put four uh, cattle it's head and hoof burials so basically what that means is if you imagine a cow hide uh, so you know all the meat's been taken away it's just the hide but the head and the hooves are left um, attached and it's a thing it, it you find them on uh, in Europe uh, the, you know they're not uncommon in Europe what is uncommon is that there were four of them on this in this one burial yeah. there were four of them that's just unheard of so this yeah. guy was you know God, it must have been extremely important in whatever sense to have four of those yeah and they're not buried a around i mean the 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 thing is that the guy's on his side um sort of crouched position um facing south east yes and all the cattle although they're above him slightly they're but schematically they're in front of him and the and the and the skulls are facing away from him also down to the southeast it's amazing isn't it yeah now, also in the southeast, have we finished with uh, with grave goods there? Because there's something else, isn't it? There was the amber bead. Sorry, I nearly forgot uh, the amber yes, bead. Um, it, come back yeah. to that, probably. Yeah, I think we, we want to come back to the amber bead, don't we, really? Because uh, we could... Uh, it's not going off on one. It's just that it's something that in itself, it, it, for us anyway, it has a, 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 another significance. It's yeah. not a different significance. It's another significance. But... Uh, but okay, so there was this amber bead also uh, found uh, within that burial. The thing is, yeah. uh, facing the southeast, as Michael was just saying, that to the southeast, um, I don't know about you, but I think that as soon as you mention uh, a compass direction, it makes it sound as if it's a long way away. You know, off to the southeast. Isn't it? Yeah, when in actual fact, this is purely directional, that just yeah. to the southeast, and you're talking about a matter of feet or, you know, metres. Yeah, or, yeah. Uh, just, I can't even think, I remember Less how, than two metres, I think. Two metres away, it's, it's Less, you know, really yeah. close. Less, yeah. So this secondary burial that is uh, just next to the primary burial, and again, just how many of these do you know about? Not that many when they're put in context with another... It's a seated burial, mm. and this chap who was buried, it was an older man uh, who was buried seated facing the primary burial. No, um, no, he's perpendicular. Yeah, so well, he's he's in a sitting position. His his legs are uh, extending yeah. out in front of him and going downwards. He's he's sitting. So th they could tell from it, from the excavations they could tell that he was um he was put into this seated position with the infill. So basically they they've managed to support him in a seated position with by putting him in with the infill. With the That's why so that he is staying upright. Yeah. Um, the the sad thing about uh, this from an excavation point of view, of course, is that uh, we've only got him from the waist down, haven't we? Because he he yeah, he got ploughed at some point in in more recent history, which is a shame. So anything above the uh, pelvis has uh, disappeared with the plough, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. yeah just to be clear about the orientation, though, his feet are pointing up to the north east, so he's actually. The, the 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 principal burial is facing down towards him yes um but uh he's sideways on he's, he's almost sideways on perfectly yeah. perpendicular yeah to that it's, uh, uh, so. um and 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 this burial now he was buried with one cattle hide and hoof um well they f they've only found the remains of uh, there was a kind of discussion about whether any other, some other stuff may have been carried away with the plough from that 
yeah. burial, yeah. including, you know, not only his upper torso, but a any of the what may have been the cattle burials yeah. thing with him. Yeah. So I think it was only a few lower limbs of cattle that were left on his level. So that may be the case you know, yeah. with, with that as well. It's an, it's an interesting one, isn't it? Because, you know, you, if you look at the, the carbon dating that's, uh, that's come from this, so um, I, and I need to refer to notes here, but the, so the primary burial, uh, the dating came back as between 2287 and 2061 BC. Yeah. Um, and the secondary burial dates came back of 2141 to 1962 BC. Now, so you can pick a central point and you can say, well, let's say 2000 BC, because that fits within both date ranges. So these people could have been buried, uh, you know, <laughs> pick any relationship you like, you know, I mean, hey, um, you know, as uh, Andy said, because when we, when we asked Andy, right at the beginning, because we wanted to make sure that we weren't going off on one. Uh, so we asked Andy, uh, you know, did, did you come up with this idea of it being a, a shaman and the journalists have taken this from you or did somebody just make this up and everybody else ran with it? And Andy said, yeah, yeah, it was David Keyes at the Independent who, uh, who first came up with the idea that the seated burial could have been a shaman. And it just snowballed from there. Okay. Now, in fairness to David Keyes at the Independent, maybe, Why not? <laughs> maybe Why not? could have been. <laughs> Equally, it you can you can make up whatever story you like. It could be that the younger bloke in the primary burial, well, maybe it was his uncle who they buried sitting next to him, overlooking him. Maybe, maybe they were buried within. You can't say necessarily that they were buried in, at the same time, but, you know, maybe they were buried within a very short space of time of each other. Alternatively, the dates would also support that they were buried 150 years apart. Yeah, yeah. You know, so, I mean, the, the, what we're, the job we're trying to do is just lay out the basic facts that may have escaped anybody that looked at the headlines or even looked at yeah. the content of some of these articles. We endeavour to keep it real. About because they are... <laughs> Do you know the most egregious, uh, misle misleading stuff? It actually came from the Times, would you believe? Uh, they had a perfectly sensible headline um, in, in the Times, but then mentioned uh, four valuable rugs being uh, buried with our Bronze Age yeah. chieftain. That's completely made up. It is made and then, up. then went on to refer to them as um, possible for... Um, for cow hides, yeah, you know, which is a uh, complete messing up of the fact that we'll, the, we'll, the we'll take cow hides, hoof but valuable rugs. rugs. Yeah, so uh, bizarre. We don't know what that is about. However, however, all despite all that, despite you know, sort of being a bit question marky about the head headlines. Yeah, having looked at it, you know, for myself, I'm thinking. Oh, there's a there is a story here because the relationship in those burials is quite striking, and it's not just that um, the the yeah. the burial is facing him, but if you look at the angles of the cattle as well, they are specifically aimed at where the second burial is. Yeah. Those it's... those the the bones and the uh, uh, cattle skulls. Eat, even the ones that are slightly further down to the south are angled back more to point out where the secondary burial is. So whatever story you make up, you think, well, there's got to be something there. Yeah. yeah. Whatever, whether they were buried at the same time or whether they were, um, uh, whether they were buried separately. But then the complicating factor is the uniqueness of the seated burial. Yes. What does that mean? Yeah, uh, that you know somebody overlooking somebody else, uh... and the predominance of cattle. That's an interesting yeah. thing. Well, the fact you that know, there were four. Hide what burial, story does that tell us too? The, the fact that there were four head and hides in the primary burial, that is just head and hoof. Sorry, I say head and hide. Did I say head? Yeah, and you've hide? been reading that Times I, article again, haven't you? Head and hoof. <laughs> head and hoof. <laughs> Um, 
but the fact there were four of them it's that's huge it's yeah. absolutely huge um shall we before we forget yeah let's go back to that amber bead yes please uh because it's something that crops up repeatedly in burials that you you look in the uh, in the excavation reports and so often you see that some uh, that somebody was buried with an amber bead and you think what's the significance of an amber bead what is mm. this and it was only when we were talking with uh, Duncan Garrow, uh, some of you might have uh, have heard the interview we did with Duncan, uh, yeah. who he'd done a lot of work on uh, burial practices. His uh, grave goods are his speciality, you know. Indeed. Uh, and, and the project that he's doing with the British Museum on, on that very uh, subject. He, he That's is. why we were talking about it. But he yes, is. sorry. Yeah. Uh, well, the fascinating thing is that um, Duncan was doing a lot of research into possible shrouds and the like. You think, whoa, 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 wait a minute. So if you've got, uh, whether it's a shroud or whether it's a fabric bag that contained something that has a drawstring and the, the amber bead is, the, the reason there's only one is because it was on a drawstring. And you go, yeah. Because even you know down here when we made a film last year about the, uh, the the amount of dolmens in the longer dock and even down here, a single amber bead in a burial, you know it happens and so now every time we hear amber bead, it's it's got to be a drawstring, hasn't it? Well, okay, you can't say it has to be, but it makes sense that the reason there's only one is because there was one bag, and the bag uh, had the drawstring. That, yeah, yeah. And you wonder how special an amber bead would be. I mean, I, I can imagine that uh, drawstrings could be drawn together with a wooden bead or, you know, a bead made, made of pretty well anything. So I know nothing about the, how often uh, amber turns up in this form or, you know, how often other materials turn up in the, uh, well, it, it's in, an interesting in the guise thing, of a perforated because... bead in this context. Well, it makes me wonder... You know, from a trading point of view, that Baltic amber, so stuff that you find on the um, on the west coast of Scandinavia, you also find yeah. on the east coast of of Britain. Uh, yeah. So if if people are just collecting amber on the east coast of Britain and and you know and it's being traded and worked, you know, it's. Uh, uh, yeah, so we could we could go off on one on that one, but another one we could go off on is hmm, Lechlade is one of those places in central England where it's about as far from the sea as you can <laughs> yes. possibly get, and here we've got a copper yeah. dagger with a whalebone pommel. Yes, yeah, that's Excellent. a very good point. That's a very good point. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I must admit that the uh, the whalebone pommel. Uh, that's just well, the only place, uh, you know, that we've looked at as, as the prehistory guys where whalebone comes in predominantly, and that's on Orkney. Yeah. Um, you know, with the, particularly with the work on the Cairns Brock and all the rest of it. Yeah. Um, yeah, they've been doing particular work on whalebone up there. But again, I don't know. This is the first I've heard about a whalebone uh, pommel coming up. Are they as, uh, you know, common as... <laughs> Muck or yes. <laughs> uh, well, it, 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 in itself, it I mean, wrong? although it is going off on one to talk about it within the context of this burial, probably, except mm. that uh, you think, well, it, 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 they have to have been okay, maybe not common, but it's just you get a lot of bone out of a whale, oh, and uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, so so if you've got a, a pommel made of whale bone in this burial, well, what happened to the rest of that whale? You know, where, do, where what was the rest of that used for? It's unknowable. Yeah. Um, but we can fairly safely assume that uh, whalebone would only come from beached whales because they weren't whaling then. No. Uh, and so they would be precious in a way that, you know, the materials that uh, come from a whale. Anyway, I think it's about time we started summing up on this. I think the first area to start start summing up kind of, is this guy, the central belly, has been elevated to, you know, the level of prince. The archaeological term is that sticks is high status. Yes. What does that mean? High status in, you know, 
I don't think in national terms, obviously in very local terms. I would have thought we're talking, when we talk high status in these terms, we're thinking we're actually looking at very local. Um, but again, we, we could paint any pictures that we want, couldn't we? Because it could be that supposing, you know, and I am going off on one deliberately, supposing you've got a local chieftain, right? And this yeah. guy comes in, and in whatever scenario, this guy comes in and saves the other guy's life. Yeah. So they give him a monster burial. You know, he might have yeah. been, you know, he might have been a bloke who was, I don't know, he could have been completely unrelated, but he did something that warranted that level of status within a community. Um, yeah. It is. It's, it's another one of those unknowable things. But the fact yeah. of the matter is, he was interesting as well that time wise it's beaker uh, but they say it was beaker burial without the beaker <laughs> right yeah fair enough i'll tell you what if i was a writer i could construct a whole novel around this that's it the could. point isn't it yeah. easy that's yeah. there's, there's so much detail and specificity and uniqueness yes. about it and significance yes. possibly about it you could uh, and that's the wonderful thing about doing prehistory, isn't it? <laughs> yes. And this yeah. ki kind of fine. You fill so, in your own blanks, but um, yeah, yeah. It's just so it's what? Just... Well, I think what we're trying to say this in uh, as in so many other instances as well. The headlines don't do justice. They may do a job in getting attention. But unless you go past the headlines, you don't get to the real riches of it. Yeah. You know, calling somebody a Bronze Age chief or a prince or, you know, calling somebody a, a shaman. Well, yeah, maybe. Maybe, yeah. Um, but but the beauty is in the in the details yeah. here. And, um, and, whatever, and you, you, whatever stories, you choose to take away from them. Yeah, well, the stories are, are usually so much richer when you dig behind the headlines. Uh, mm. You know, it's a remarkable thing. Uh, so, I, you know, I, I, I have to say, you know, again, a, a big thanks to Andy Hood of Foundations Archaeology yeah. for yeah. Thank you. sending us through a lot of good detail. The the full excavation report is actually, um, it, it's just going to publication around uh, now, I believe. So okay. uh, it'll be great to get, uh, <laughs> and we got the prelim report and that's a hundred and something pages long in itself. So uh, so the full yeah, report's yeah. gonna be quite something to read. I'll I'm gather together whatever that. links I can and uh, I'll, I'll put them in the, yeah. in the in the comments below. So yeah, I think we've just about wrapped that up. I think we've covered it. I don't I think, think so. we've missed anything. So. It, it is. It's, so it's a, thanks to Andy Hood. And, uh, yeah, also, uh, thanks to our Patreon supporters. Bless you. Thank you for your continued support and uh, in, uh, making all this possible. Things are snowballing a bit at the moment, so we're excited about that. Always yeah. good. So, yeah, hope you're enjoying the ride. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, folks. We'll speak to you all again very soon indeed. Cheers for now. Bye-bye. See ya. Bye. <laughs> Here. Thank you for watching this Prehistory Guys show. There's loads more to watch and you can get to some of it on this playlist here. If you'd like to receive updates about when we publish new content, hit the subscribe button and you can unlock even more content by becoming a Patreon supporter. Hit this button here to find out more about that. See you soon.